This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Big house, big business. Important jobs. These men are detectives trying to help solve one of the great mysteries of the natural world. Part of a royal mission across Europe. Portable electricity to water, not always a good idea. Switch on, take care and start fishing. Stunned briefly by man-made current, it's beginning to look like a good spot. These little young fish hold the clues to an extraordinary life of travel and survival, a challenge to scientists crucial fishermen and noble in maturity. In their global migrations they may meet or pass one of these, the European eel, whose numbers have declined greatly. Well what is going on in the rivers and seas of Europe and beyond? Anesthetic enables them to be checked individually, vital statistics that may indeed prove to be vital. Excuse. Salmon par, a more grown-up version from the fry that hatch from eggs laid by the female or hen in the river gravel. This youngster could grow to a really great size if it survives. And to do so, it would have to survive an amazing life. To find out more about that, the salmon detectives will have their work cut out. A few scales, like fingerprints, are carefully listed and no harm to the fish. The Tweed Foundation was set up in 1983 to help the fishers of the Tweed in as many ways as possible. Where they go is of great interest to biologists, fishermen and the general public. Salmon research reaches the wildest, purest, most spectacular parts of the country. Streams, rivers, lakes and the sea, both near and far. In fact, very far. Yes, you might think this place must be pure and safe. But you'd be wrong. These biologists are taking precautions against a creature less than half a millimetre in size that's hardly visible to the naked eye. It's a parasite that infects the fins of salmon and has been responsible for complete losses of salmon from some rivers to the east in Europe. This fish fluke, Gyrodactylus, can spread quickly and is difficult to kill. More samples, more details, but here far from the other team, when put together from everywhere under investigation, they should get a better picture of what is one of the most valuable aquatic resources in the world, both wild and farmed. That's very controversial. It can be tough going for a two-legged detective, and certainly for a fish. All fins and a wriggly, slippery body. And then there's predators to contend with, especially us. We net them. We tag them. We label them. Hardly respectful treatment for the king of fish. But it's all in their interest and future. And ours too, of course. The, the radio tag and this uh, certainly does look uncomfortable uh, to us placed inside the salmon uh, once it's been caught and it has various code numbers and so forth on it 
so that if it's found, we can um, determine which salmon it's actually come from. And then that's a nice, obvious physical sign, external sign, um, that the fish has been tagged. And uh, the angler who may recapture the fish can then take a note of that number and contact the uh, biologists at the Fisheries Trust um, so that we can then know where and when it's been recaptured. Um, and then the fish goes back into the water um, and carries on up the system towards its spawning grounds. So much for the science and what it may reveal. That will be later. In the meantime, there's been much controversy about salmon farms, now a huge business in Scotland where they need jobs, income, and the consumer gets a cheaper product. They're now everywhere, but like intensively reared anything, there can be problems, like disease and parasites, and escapes and accidents that can contaminate the wild salmon. Norway, Aquagen. Though it may not look it, this is just a tiny part of what is a truly industrial business producing millions of eggs a year. At least the salmon do. The broodstock, as they're called, have their milt, sperm, and eggs collected and mixed. The fertilized eggs hatch in about 60 days. There's a lot of care taken about the genetics involved, as there should be with this kind of godlike manipulation. And the combination of farmed salmon and wild ones has caused problems around the world. Fish farming has gone global, but despite three quarters of the world's surface being covered by water, only a few percent of all food that is produced comes from the sea. And it's not new, the Chinese farmed fish before the birth of Christ. And talking of millions of hungry people now and increasing, you can see the way fish farming will go. Overfishing the sea and taking food, that's fish meal, from it for aquaculture will need some restraint. Health benefits, lower costs from mass production and many jobs where they're needed are all part of the salmon farming picture today with cod, halibut and shellfish waiting in the wings or rather waiting in the rivers and the sea where diving ducks hunt, intercepting small salmon heading downstream to an uncertain future Not only are the gusanas a threat on their extraordinary journey, but there are many more, some natural, others man-made. This cunning device, a fish wheel, collects the migrating baby salmon for yet more research by the salmon detectives. It can also connect with other studies in other countries whose rivers will feed more and more of the very vulnerable par to a crucial place out at sea. Well, let's see what is caught and what has become a mobile laboratory. Well, the usual plastic rubbish global these days, especially affecting the sea, where the river and the young salmon are heading. In the past there have been big worries about the state of Norway's rivers. Bearing in mind all the connections with the land, the watershed and the sky above, acid rain affecting forests and runoff. Fjorten igjen. 
SS 4 percent. And you can also see that we we have deliberately cut the, the adipose fin. Yes. It's so that we can recognize them later. Mm. There's no behind. And they also uh, got a small uh, coded uh, wire tag in their nose actually. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's good. Uh, yes. About the farming industry is that uh, they um, Urrat. Wow. Livat. 12.8. Fettvinneklippa, FF. Åja. Oh, yeah. 7%. 19.7. 0%. Mm. With about 667 Atlantic salmon rivers, Several of the world's largest specimens of wild Atlantic salmon, Norway remains the world's leading producer of the species. The Cassandra, a sawbill duck, with the right beak for handling slippery fish, is heading downriver, and so are the little salmon, to a place where wildlife and people mix, where gulls squeak, perch anywhere, and nest anywhere. And they don't need a bus to get around this spectacular part of Norway. Famous for its fjords and dramatic coastline. Yes, they can fly over it towards the sea. And below, the little salmon keeps going if the goosander hasn't gripped it. The millions of vulnerable small salmon move to a feeding area west of Norway, north of Britain, west of Iceland, coming all the way up from France and Spain, and from as far away as Russia and Eastern Europe. And there's even another feeding area, the other side of the Atlantic, off Greenland, receiving fish from Western Canada and the USA. Millions will gather, millions will die, be eaten, but then they'll split up and miraculously find their way back to the river of their birth. That's where the salmon detectives come in, to help turn losers into winners. But losing is a real possibility out at sea, in the feeding area where they may spend up to four years, according to research. That's if they don't become food for plunging gannets. Attacked from above and below, and dolphins join the feeding frenzy. more dolphins and less salmon but they're prolific breeders if they're given the chance super swimmers like guillemots that fly in pursuit Sharks with teeth for the job. And seals may look cute, but they're fast and furious on the hunt in this underwater jungle.
Then the really serious salmon stalkers, killer whales or walkers. They will intercept migrating salmon. And of course a major predator is man, often guilty of overfishing all kinds of fish all over the world. But now huge sanctuaries are being set up in an attempt to create a sustainable ocean where mackerel can flourish and much else too. Including of course that desirable and very valuable resource salmon. They're heading from the salty sea through brackish to fresh water. A massive physiological change, as well as the drive to push on upriver. In this case, the River Moy, one of Ireland's cleanest and therefore most attractive to fishermen and salmon. But not just men, but birds too, like this heron, always on the lookout. The salmon may not be hungry, but may grab a fly, well, sort of. These fish are worth a fortune if you include hotels, transport, jobs, food and general tourism. So it's in Ireland's interest to sustain its salmon stocks, though it seems a sad end to such a fine creature. This is justifiably one of the most famous angling venues in the world, where catches of over 5,000 salmon have been recorded in a single season. Its entire length of just over one and a half miles is located within the Bellina town boundaries. Well, how many will get through? They're already worn down by struggling against the current. Some hesitate. Others are damaged and already weak, though they may be tempted. Perfect shape for the epic journey. But there are more obstacles to overcome before a sexy but sad end. Over the years, since many more salmon crossed the oceans and swam up rivers, barriers like dams and weirs have reduced their success. Pollution too in big cities has also taken 
a huge toll. Brief interception for his own good. This individual is checked for tags, measured, weighed and moves on again leaving a trail of vital statistics in its wake. That was Ireland. And now to France, probably from the same feeding grounds off Greenland in the North Atlantic. This icy scene is the destination of other adult salmon arriving at their breeding grounds. Hardly an appropriate season, you might think. But you'd be wrong. For those individuals that managed to gather enough strength to leap what water was falling, these shallow upstream gravel beds are, if you like, home. A place to give birth and die. Not to a heron, but from exhaustion, sheer wear and tear. But that's not the end of the story. There's new life under there, in the shape of an egg, full of yolk, a welcome snack for a dipper which can walk under water. And there are many more out in the frozen landscape, in a shed. But there's a problem. In there is a very special investment for the future of French river salmon. Scientists are struggling to restore what was a healthy population, but they've been beset by problems, the usual like dams, including a vast controversial project on the Loire. And this is an attempt to reverse history. Salmon were abundant in all French rivers flowing into the Atlantic until the late 19th century. It's estimated that France enjoyed as many as 800,000 returning fish in the 18th century. But by 1900, 75% of potential spawning grounds had become inaccessible and salmon had disappeared from most major French rivers. So what about the Allier? tributary of the great River Loire. Now here's a solution. Fertilised salmon eggs from artificial propagation, some brought in from Scotland, potentially millions of little winners, but they only have a future if they can reach their spawning grounds later on. Even the upper Allier River, where the last remaining long migrating salmons of Western Europe reproduced, access was blocked by the lethal Poutes Monastrol Dam. That is what happened. But now for something more cheerful at Christmas, not far from the town centre of Chanteurge. Down there is a big investment in an attempt to restore the rivers Loire and Allier to their former salmon glory, original home of that king of fish. In 1994, there was a grand, well, not so grand really, plan to develop the Loire Basin. Since then, two dams have been destroyed and an efficient fish ladder has been built on the Vichy Dam. And this main hatchery, the largest in Europe, has begun to produce juvenile fish, of which two eyes are the first sign of life. And what an extraordinary life it will turn out to be. But not for all. For the spawning salmon, this is a big investment too, and many will die. But many will go on to produce, hopefully, more salmon in a future as changing as much as man is.
their life is in our hands as usual. So will France be able to show us the way? And the way the future French salmon may come from their feeding grounds in the North Atlantic is similar to those separating off towards Britain, Scotland and England in fact. Because this is the estuary of the River Tweed, a border between the two countries. Again, as in Ireland, the same huge adjustment from salt through brackish to fresh water. So do you call a salmon a sea fish or a freshwater fish? Well, it's both, but this part is the most risky. There will have been nets at sea, but now in the confines of the river, as the tide drops, getting through is a matter of life and death. They may pass that other great ocean migrant, the eel, on a voyage across the Atlantic to breed in the Sargasso Sea. On the other hand, that's a bit sad, though the cormorant must eat, as eels are decreasing and it's one less to breed for the future. Two worlds connected. The River Tweed is their lifeline here, but also a death line for the salmon upstream as that expert fisherman, the heron, flies. to the human equivalent, and they have the right nets for the job. Who's this lady that had the bet? I'm going to take a photograph of this because I can't believe it. <laughs> Shout it's a rubble. <laughs> it's a few young salmon. The right skills and considerable strength. Aye, like. <laughs> That's cruel. <laughs> 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 you know what the wife says. <laughs> Many would say a wild caught salmon tastes better than the farmed, chemicals included, version. And these wild ones certainly cost more. But such is public demand. And the main thing is that wild stocks remain healthy and, if possible, increased. And it is possible, as here on the Tweed, often called the Queen of Salmon Rivers, for the King of Fish. That means quotas, careful regulation, jobs, and especially considering the whole catchment. This includes such variety as landowners, farmers, water, wildlife, tourism, forestry. The Tweed Forum's area of influence covers 2,000 square miles. There's been a vast £9 million rural regeneration project with a £4.1 million heritage lottery grant, the largest ever given to a countryside project at the time. That's got to be good news for all those concerned Especially the salmon, well, the survivors anyway. It's all connected, and other rivers may not be so lucky or so wise. This weed is bad news, and it's the sort of thing that can be caused by what happens upstream in other catchments.
The apparently harmless and enjoyable pastime of golf may have a hidden cost. The need for perfect green for golfers may lead to problems downstream for fishermen, indeed for much river life. Chemicals cause algal growth to proliferate and the river may die or be damaged. As we've seen, salmon have suffered greatly from what has happened to their living lifelines, the rivers and their tributaries. Here's a classic example plus a solution. Yes, green energy may be good with no pollution. But in the case of Pitlochry on the River Tummel, it could have been bad for salmon. Now that's in the way, seriously. So Scottish and Southern Energy did the right thing. They provided a ladder, not the sort for getting up on your roof, but more like a series of flowing ponds up which the salmon can easily migrate. and with a bit of a rest on the way. Without this kind of expensive help, many salmon elsewhere don't get through and never manage to breed. So these will, hopefully. they'll swim on into Loch Fascali, created, as they say, working with the power of nature, and in this case, helping it. So the king of fish is nearly there, appropriately passing the local castle. more are arriving, having beaten the odds, well, so far. So far, so good. A clean, clear highland stream, a possible spawning spot. But look at it another way. So far, so bad. Clogged streams. That is where land use, forestry, can kill salmon, or at least prevent them producing more. Tragic after such an extraordinary saga, indeed a wondrous life cycle. Well, yes, that's better, much better. High in the Scottish mountains, the salmon detectives are on the case.
This is perfect spawning country, many miles from the sea and many, many miles from the feeding area in the North Atlantic. This is where they were born. They live between four to eight years, but many don't make it. A female, a hen, taken for artificial propagation. They need both sexes to get fertilized eggs. This one probably won't make it. Damage, fungus, but give him a chance. Another beauty, perfect. Well, there's a nice hen fish, it's half spent. Get a banging in here. Good talk. Good talk. Take that one. Yep. Right. Can you lean right at him and slip it in rather than. <laughs> Sorry, pal. There's another female tail on there. There's another female tail on there. And the male with the damage. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just watch him go. Hardly surprising with what he's been through over, under, all to return to where he started life right here as a tiny egg in the gravel. Good luck to him and all the rest of this precious resource. It's the place, pure and simple. The changing climate may affect it and us, but the salmon is incredibly resilient. Many rivers are cleaner now and the fish respond, returning to places they had to leave in the past. And the River Thames is a classic example. Below a bridge in Scotland, this great traveller seeks a mate. That's what she's come for. She'll need extra energy, even now. But if ever there was a survivor, it's the salmon. And here, appropriately, by Balmoral Castle, home to the royal family, from Queen Victoria to today, at the Royal Bridge. May the King of Fish reign over the river and the remarkable life that lives there, as well as the sea in its amazing double life. This is all that huge effort is for, a final surge to replenish the stocks. From male milt fertilizing her eggs, and plus a surprising entry. Little salmon par, as we saw at the start of the epic journey with the salmon detectives. And he's getting in on the act. Thousands of eggs may be laid, 
and few will survive to repeat this in years to come. And it's downriver again to the sea. And maybe four years later, back to exactly here, the King of Fish will return to the castle of the Queen.